Thanks to BOTB.com for sponsoring this video. They are the dream car competition company and they have over 180 cars to play for, including the new VW Golf R for just 225 a ticket. And they have now also included a very cool tuned up VW Golf R with a 25% discount. So you can play for that car for just 180. That's a 46,000 pound car. And what's more is that it comes with 50,000 pounds of cash in the boot. For those of you not in the UK, you can still play there. Over 600 winners come from all over the world. So if you want to play for this 96,000 pound prize, Go to BOTB.com and get your tickets. But remember, this offer ends at midnight on Sunday. So make sure you get your tickets and make sure you let us know if you win. Good luck, guys. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max, and today we've got the all-new 2021 VW Golf R, the Mark 8 Golf R. And this is, the, the Golf Rs are always super highly anticipated, and we've been, Looking forward to driving this car for quite some time, but as you can see, the weather is crap. And to make matters worse, we only have this car for like three hours. So it is now uh, 4.30, as you can see. We picked this car up at three and we have to return it at six. So we've got three hours with the car and of course it rains. So unfortunately nothing we can do about that but we're going to make a review nonetheless i'm going to show you around it show you all the cool stuff on it and then we'll take it for a drive towards the autobahn for a little wet autobahn blast but before we begin don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive updates when we upload a new video and check us out on instagram if you like at autotopnl for some behind the scenes footage so we're going to cover the new golf r and we're going to focus on the r stuff of course r it is a new r and at the front i mean we know this look from the new gti that flat nose with the led bar running across which is not on right now let's see if we can get that to turn on i think this should turn it on yeah so now it's turned on as you can see everything is turned on and of course we've got a more aggressive front bumper with air intakes and stuff like that um, this car has the optional performance package which means that you get 19 inch wheels really like these wheels they are quite beautiful wrapped in hankook rubber and uh, we've got new bigger brakes with aluminium brake calipers 357 millimeter discs at the front perforated discs uh, braking performance should be much better than before but uh, as I said performance package which gives you that upgrade from 18 to 19 inch wheels and it also gives you this rear wing which is more aggressive and a bit motorsport inspired you can see that it's actually quite a big wing and it looks really cool I think on this car you also get two extra driving modes with the performance pack but uh, we'll talk about that later uh, this car also has the optional Akrapovich titanium exhaust, which looks beautiful, perforated as well with an Akrapovich logo on there. And the bangs you get with revving are actually super, super loud. Uh, when you're driving though, it is almost completely silent, but the revving is loud. Now, I'm going to show you the trunk because I noticed someone asked me to show you guys the trunk in the review. So here it is. It fits two arms. As you can see, nicely, one foot as well. Uh, no, anyway, it is a very practical car, the Golf R. I think that's why it's so popular because it is, you know, very practical and very cool at the same time. And uh, that's, I think that's some, something people generally really like, something they can use every day and is fast and cool as well. Aspirational, people call that. Again, no ga gas powered strut or spring, whatever that's called, to keep the hood up. Uh, and in here we've got the EA888 two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine with 320 horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque. This is up from 300 horsepower and 400 newton meters in the last Golf uh, R. So, it, yeah, it's not that big of a jump, but I think maybe they are 
yeah, they don't want to get too close to the RS3, of course. And uh, may maybe this is around the limit of what they can do with this engine and still be reliable. I don't know. Could be a couple of reasons. But 320 horsepower is still quite a lot. Okie dokie. So we'll start it up. And in here, well, let me just go into race mode, neutral. I'll give it a couple of revs. Yes, yes. So you've got a few nice bangs and sometimes, oh my God, I hate this. Did you guys just see that notification? I got a notification with an eco tip. Do not use throttle while standing still. I'm in race mode for God's sake. Come on. Let me just rev the, mm, the car. Okay, anyway, uh, on the interior, we've got a lot of blue accents. So we've got these R bucket seats with that check on there uh, in blue, blue stitching. Uh, these are actually, what is that? Is that like Alcantara? It feels softer. Maybe, um, but they are nice and supportive and sporty, uh, quite comfortable actually, quite soft. But still you've got nice ball strength. We've got an R steering wheel with blue accents and an R logo as well, blue stitching, beautiful steering wheel with pedal shifters that are bigger than in the GTI, which is great because this is so much better to drive. The GTI's pedals are a little bit too small, if you ask me. I don't think we should talk about this anymore. I've bashed it enough in the past. This is absolutely horrible, okay? I've seen so many things recently, even after my review with the Golf GTI. I've done three reviews, I think, now with the GTI Mark 8, and every time I drive this car, I am driven absolutely mad by this system. Um, the climate control stuff here is not illuminated, for instance, which is also rubbish. And I've seen a lot of videos of people who are saying that their systems crash and it's absolutely horrible. And then there are also the ergonomic reasons uh, for this system being rubbish, like it being everywhere, six clicks into the system to get anything done. But anyway, I'm not going to uh, spend too much time on that. It's my least favorite part of this car. Now we've got Digital speedo, of course, and we are going to change that because we have a lot of different modes. So I'm going to use the one with the biggest ref counter and speedo, this one. So this is the R speedo, I would say. We'll put that in drive. We've got uh, the seven speed DSG gearbox, of course. And if we go into mode right here, you can see that we've got comfort, sport and race. And I think within race mode, I don't want audio. See, this is horrible. Stop, stop it. In ra within race mode, you've got drift and Nurburgring mode. So Nurburgring is the basically the settings they used to set the Nurburgring lap time, which was like under eight really quick. Uh, but drift mode is the, <sighs> drift mode is the one we're going to use. Yes, we want to use drift mode. Everything ready? Yes, here we go. Drift mode is available with this car. And that, we're going to talk about that quite a bit because it, it changes the way the Golf R feels a lot. And it's also the biggest change uh, in this car compared to the previous one. I'm going to try and do a 180 and force it a little bit because we don't have, you know, crazy drifting corners. So you can see that it actually sends a lot of power to the rear if you want it to. Um, I'll try to do that again. In the previous Golf R, if you would try to do this, you would just understeer into a wall, but you can see it actually sends power to the rear. And that is because we've got an R performance differential at the rear. So we've got, ah, We've got the regular Haldex system, which sends up to 50% of the power to the rear. And on top of that, you've got that 
R Performance Differential, which has two electromechanical clutches that uh, can send up to 100% of the power going to the rear to either wheel. So it's like a torque vectoring differential. And that means that, especially in the wet, I mean, if we do launch control in drift mode, yes, if we can do that, yep, here we go. Oh, it actually grips. I was not expecting that because I was doing this earlier in sport mode, in race mode or sport mode. And it was spinning its rear wheels quite a bit. So, oh, that's because the ESC is in sport. So we're going to turn it off now. <laughs> okay, of course, of course. So it doesn't happen now, but I promise you when I did this earlier, it was spinning its wheels all over the place. It's rear wheels. And you can actually feel this happening because it feels a little bit unnatural sometimes. Um, but the fact that you can do it is really cool. The drift mode itself is really cool, of course, but the fact that it's got that torque factoring rear differential, sound check. Yeah, it's, it's pretty quiet on the outside. The fact that it's got that torque factoring differential means that in this corner, third gear, full throttle, I can actually feel the right rear being pushed forward. And that is such a great feeling because it makes the car feel more nimble, more agile, less understeered, uh, which is really, really good. But because that's basically the character of a Golf R, the previous one is just understeer. If you start pushing it, you know, on a wet day or on a hot day with, with hot tires, it's understeer. And with this one, it feels more neutral, more balanced, more aggressive. Um, yeah, and I would say that that's actually a really, really big step up for the Golf R in general. Why did the freaking thing change? Does that change every time you change driving mode or what the hell is up with that? Okay, so this is the thing we want and I'm going to install the speedo cam BRB. Okay, so we've got the speedo cam installed. We're in race mode. We're going to go for sport for the gearbox as well. And we're going to see what it's like at the autobahn now it is quite wet so i don't know how wet it is at the autobahn but we'll see we will see what happens full throttle so the sound in here you can hear is a bit artificial sounds like a computer game and the shifts are lightning quick especially the downshifts are quite a bit quicker than with the previous car but the upshifts are super fast as well now we're in race mode right now so that means that everything is in its most aggressive setting but it's still quite comfy i would say that was too 66 on the speedo now because we have the performance spec that also means that our top speed is limited at 270 kilometers an hour instead of 250 now of course we've also measured the 100 to 200 time which was 11.89 seconds which is respectable i would say uh, i'll put up a screenshot of the list on screen right now so you can see where it fits in uh, but 11.89 is not bad at all now something that is really impressive is that we've actually been able to measure a 0 to 100 in these conditions 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in four and a half seconds that is really really quick 
Uh, VW says it will do 4.7 seconds, but 4.5 on a road this wet is absolutely insane. So everything has gotten faster, quicker, better, yes, yes to all. Uh, better engineered probably, they've spent even more time. Hey, that's my car. Hello. Beautiful. Ugh. So kick down, it still has to think for a second like with the last car. Um, but anyway, everything has gotten better and more efficient, faster, more powerful. But I mean, is it a lot of fun to drive? No, not really. Um, it's a bit clinical, this car, you know? It's a bit distant. It doesn't really try to, to get you to have fun or anything like that. Yes, it's got drift mode, but I don't know. Everything just feels very, very efficient. Oh, those brakes are very powerful though. Really good brakes. Uh, so we've got a new aluminium subframe at the, at the front, which means that the uh, weight at the front is down, of course. That's a quick uh, SQ7 actually, not bad. That's 270 on the speedo. <laughs> the stupid speedo cam that keeps falling off. I'm just going to turn that off. I hope you guys can see this one still. Anyway, as I said, new aluminium subframe, uh, which is lighter, uh, brakes are lighter, everything is better. And I do think that they are moving in the right direction with the Golf R because they are focusing more on driving pleasure than before, I think, with that Nürburgring mode and uh, the drift mode. But, you know, it's still not a lot of fun. It's still not as much fun as the GTI, for instance. So that's 278 on the speed mode. We have to brake here because it's a border zone. Braking hard. Yeah. That was almost 280 on the speedo. Not bad in a Golf. You do need some space as you can see, but it is a really impressive car. It's just not as fun as some of the competitors. And I mean, still, I think a Golf GTI Club Sport is, is more fun to drive than this. But it is a very capable car to drive every day. And I think that's the most important thing about this car. That's the thing that people you know, that's why this car is so popular, because it, it can do everything, and it's really good at everything. And it still is. I mean, it is probably the best Golf ever. But does it make me smile like, you know, a Golf GTI on a, on a nice road? Or even better, a Renault Megane, the Trophy, or, you know, yeah, there are more fun cars out there, but this is probably the most capable one. Anyway, that's a long ending, but I'm going to ended here. I hope you enjoyed it. You can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle. You can also check out this video or go check out this playlist. See you at the next one. Bye guys.